It brings together a body of scholars, film professionals, critics, screenwriters, editors, film marketers, film advertisers, and just the general body of film enthusiasts. It's a marketplace of sharing ideas um, and giving a helping hand to one another. Although the group started as a virtual group on the social media platform, it has uh, since the last three months or so of its existence um, developed programs and ideas uh, that have allowed members to garner the huge benefit of belonging to a body like this. One of such programs is the Wednesday Warm Seat Series which members participate in. We are members of IFC, and one member of IFC is put on the spot and grilled for two hours. Questions are asked, general specifics about the person's professional trajectory. And I believe that a whole lot of people will learn from this when these compilations are eventually um, captured in the book form. What we are here to do today it's a very powerful, I mean, emanates from a very powerful statement. And the summary is that we will stop complaining about what people have not done. We started this by complaining that history is not being captured enough. Especially the history of people in our own walk of life. Do not forget that the history of a people, or the history of a place, a country, a profession, is the history of the people who live in that place, who live in that country, is the history of the people who practice that profession. So you cannot, in any way, tell the history of Nigerian art without necessarily telling the history of the people who make the art possible. We've lamented enough. A friend of mine was saying just outside, I was sharing with me an experience in which he was asked to go and deliver a message to a notable Yoruba writer who lives in Ibano, from Lagos. And on getting to the destination, he was told that the writer died four months ago. The writer is somebody we all know, but unfortunately, he passed on and nobody knew he had been gone for four years. A couple of, I mean, for four months, a couple of months ago, we were all assembled in Oyo, where we went to celebrate the passing on of Baba Francis Oladili, one of the, I mean, the first indigenous movie maker, filmmaker in Nigeria. A very good colleague of Baba Arulogun, whom we are celebrating today. A pastor, but there's very little you can find about him. So we say, we will, in our own way, capture a bit of history. So what we are here to do in the legacy series is to identify individuals and personalities who have um, achieved um, something worthy of mention in their lifetime and put them on the spot here and allow them to share their narrative with us. And we will be free to ask them questions and um, we hope that at the end of the day we will learn from this. What we have in the audience today is not just uh, a body of Ibano Film Circle members. Uh, we are from Lagos, from Ibano. Mr. Boy Adifila arrived from Lagos today. Niji uh, Koni, fortunately, I give you his apologies. He had to travel out of Nigeria this, this morning. So I'm standing in for him as co convener. Um, so I'm doing this as part welcome, as part convener's address just to explain what we have here. We also have members of that 
great professional body of fellow artists, Tampan, Tampan in the house. Please give them a round of applause. It's of significant importance to us that they could come here to this kind of forum, because this is what we intend to do. Now beyond what we do here, what we're going to do in this hall today, Professor Drotoy Adeleke, uh, thank you very much for coming. He's just making his entrance. Uh, please help to, uh, to give him a round of applause. We are happy to have you in the house. Um, what we intend to do is not just to have this event here in this hall. We've seen cameras around. Courtesy of Media Factory. So we are capturing this in the hope that when today is gone, you can walk into Connecticut Library two years, ten years, twenty years from now and say you want to know about Chief al Haji, Tikuiga Arulogun. And you can watch a two, three hour recording of what has happened today. Of course, if there are things that um, we still need to record after today, this may be just the beginning, we will follow him to his house, we will follow him to his village, and capture as much of his life that we can. Because it's a life that we all can learn from. So, our um, brethren and sisters from the Nigerian uh, Television Authority, NTA, thank you very much. We are expecting uh, people from the Broadcasting Corporation of Oyo State who have also signified the intention to be here. Thank you very much. This is also being covered by Diamond FM, the campus uh, radio station. We thank them also. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I welcome you formally to today's event. Papa Arulukun is going to be introduced shortly. The introduction is going to be done by um, it's Alani Stephen of Media Factory. As he does that, we will enjoy Baba to come on stage uh, while the excitation is being read. Please usher Baba up on stage with a round of applause. Thank you very much. is a film and television producer with wide-ranging experience in the industry film and TV center London 1968 Sender Frere Berlin West Germany 1976 and the University of Lagos 1976 to 1977 Ade Arulogun possesses adequate professional and management training that a student in good stead in his public, professional, and management's career. He attended the Management Appreciation Course of the Nigerian Institute of Management, NIM, in 1978, Industrial Relations Course for Collective Bargaining in 1971 at the University of Ibadan, the Advanced Management Course by the Royal Institute of Public Administrators, RIPA, London, in situ for NTA in 1982 and the Advanced Management Course for Public Enterprise by the Administrative Staff College of Nigeria, ASCON Badagri, in 1983. He also attended a special management course in civil service reforms for Commissioners Director General in 1990. It was organized by the federal government and held at Gateway Hotel, Ota. In his television career, he managed the production services of the Nigerian Television Authority between 1977 and 1987, till he was appointed the general manager of NTA Channel 5 and 10 in 1987. Later that year, he moved to NTA Ikeja Channel 7. In 1988, May 20, he was appointed Commissioner for Information and Culture of Oyo State. He served there till 1992, having headed the Ministries of Information, Agriculture and National Resources, Works and Transport. While in Oyo State as Commissioner, he was Chairman of the State Merit Award Committee for two years, Chairman 
of the Public Enlightenment Committee on the Transition to Civil Rule, the 1991 Population Census, the Infrastructural Appeal Fund, and the Publicity and Speech Writing Committees of the Presidential and Vice President's visit to Oyo State in 1990 and 1991, respectively. He returned to NTA after his service with Oyo State as an assistant director in the marketing department of the largest TV network in Africa. He was a chairman of the Advertising Award Committee of NTA for 1992 and 1993 and represented NTA on the Advertising Practitioners Council of Nigeria APCON Advertising Standards Panel between 1992 and 1994. Professionally, as a film and TV producer, Ahaji Arulogun, who grew up in the industry as a film editor, worked on many local and international productions, features and documentaries. Some of them won him awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Alhaji Chief Adeboyega Arulogun to the maiden edition of the Gibado Film Circle Legacy Series. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Lonnie Stevens. Um, I'd like to fire the first album, Baba. How did it all begin for you? Come again. How did it all begin for you, this journey? <clears throat> Between 1939 and 45, we used to go to the magazine road, where we would collect magazines, British Illustrated, and so on. And at that time, they had radio stations in all in strategic places in Ibadan. And occasionally, they would bring newsletters to show us, particularly about the blacks' position during the Second World War. When I started in primary school, 1944, I was nine years, three months old. My first year in primary school, I played the role of a fly in an uh, IG sanitation uh, drama fly. I never knew that I would be involved in future in film and television. When I got to, uh, there was no year that I would not appear as uh, a dramatist at the end of year. I don't know what they do now, but at the end of every year, there will be prizes for the best students, the uh, best pupils, and then there will be drama from each class. And I always acted in those drama sketches. So, and I never knew that I would take part in future in film and television. I didn't know the background of my appearance or my ancestors, that they were actors. Uh, if I knew then, I would have possibly come to this place to lead their talents because there was no curriculum, I mean, no, uh, nobody can tell you that this is your interest. Better follow this interest now. So when I got to the secondary school, being a Muslim, the black, I mean, the Americans wanted me to become a Christian because they saw my activities in school. I played football, athletics, grey aqua. At grey aqua, I would do others and I would take part in high job throughout my primary school days too. So, every fortnight, one Reverend E.M. Fine would show us films every fortnight. And these films were usually religious, Christian religion. 
feeding the crowd with five fishes and five cakes and all those. Uh, we will see the miracle at Galilee in this all Christian. But occasionally they will get to the British Council to give us British Mobito. British Mobito are newsreels. The Queen going somewhere, the Prime Minister opening this or that. So that's how I got interested. And when I left high school and got to him, we were I saw him, gave me a definition of film. I was not so satisfied, so I went to the British Council and looked at their encyclopedia and read about film. I went to the American uh, USIS. I went there, I read about film, definition, people who had made film. So when I got to <clears throat> The internet, that helped me a lot. But the internet itself was not even on film. It was on current affairs. And at the time, I was the Secretary General of the Current Affairs Society of Nigeria. I know the late Professor Aboyade, Esther Udom, and uh, various activities. So they asked us for our internet, I mean, for our constitution. In the same year, youth. Gave them. Less than three months, they started in this campus, Nigerian Foreign Affairs something, and they had a magazine. So that is relevant because most of the questions they asked at the interview was basically Foreign Affairs. And having been the secretary of the Foreign Affairs Society of Nigeria, I just, uh, I, I came up fine in the internet. I don't know what to do now. Then, 12 midnight, I will listen to Boys of America. I will listen to uh, Moscow. I will listen to German radio, and so on and so forth. So I was correct. I was correct. And that helped me in the internet. So I started at WNTV. On the 16th of June 1961. I don't know whether you can call me a pioneer in that field, but at least I was, that would be less than two years. 59 was the WNTV, October, and that's about two years. So that's how I came into, into film and television. That period, not many people got interested in. Working in television. But I always, when I passed from more plantation to Ashinjire, I would say, one day I will work in this building. One day I will work in this building. That's television. So that those of us who are youth, whatever you want to become, you can become that by doing what we can, what we now call affirmation. You have found exactly the height you want to reach. I know what I have that I will reach and I go back to filmmaking. So, briefly, <clears throat> that's how uh, I came into television. Thank you very much, Chief. I am Abajide. You worked with, um, you worked around. We knew ourselves. Uh, hi, you knew yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Um, when you when you are bringing the next question, I mean nobody is indicating. When you are bringing the next question, I'd like you to share. Um, I mean, some some time ago in your secondary school days, yes. you did a stage play that uh, almost got you sent away from the school. Oh yes, oh yes. <coughs> what happened was this: I was in class three, secondary. And we are sending up <coughs> one now professor, retired professor at DBCR for life, was the hostel, and we decided that we must send him off. So, 
for her class, class three, they play. I wrote a play. Is it right? Did I write it or I just uh, do my colleagues who will take part, what you will have to do, what you will have to say? And this was about a student who committed suicide. I didn't know any aspect of law at that time. But I used to go any holiday or go to uh, Onireke. There were magistrates' courts at Onireke then. And I would go and watch how the lawyers were behaving and what they were doing. So it was that that gave me an idea of what uh, you can do. Besides that, I used to write, contribute to the magazine, for the school's magazine, to reflect on. That night, when we finished, one of the teachers said, oh, whoever wrote that play must leave. It has to leave because that is uh, uh, against the teaching staff of the whole world. The other teachers were there. After they left, I went into my room. I started praying. Prayer is very good. If you have not been doing so, not going to church. Not only just going to church. And you must develop the art of praying to your creator and telling him what you want. And at that time, we used to buy books at the CM, I mean, we had CMS at the Duma, I mean, at the uh, Demonis. These old men would sell books. I mean, in Losam. Believe that if you read it, it will help you. Please do so. And I knew that I can still remember very well that that night, first psalm I read was Psalm 51 for forgiveness of sins. <laughs> oh, yes. Then Psalm 91, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. If you read all those Psalm, Psalm 33. So that helped me. The next morning, I got to the teacher's uh, the staff room. The first person I saw was one of the lowest head. Galileo. But that was my was my most name. You still my most name. I haven't dropped it. But uh, writing, I've, I've put it aside. Because I can't see why I should be there. A foreign name. Where? I'm a young boy. So, oh, that teacher was Mr. Adiwadi. He said, Daniel, I enjoyed last night's uh, play, particularly that you passed. Ah, when you had uh, what uh, Mr. Adiwadi was said, don't worry yourself. When we get to start one, you list it, and start with it, I will defend you. Ah, my prayer has been answered. <laughs> so, nothing happened. But when I got to a higher class, I think that's fine, I started the dramatic, so the literary and debating society, the dramatic society too, in the school. Professor Wadi Abibola, whenever we pull the curtain, and we will be at the back of the curtain, Putting all the props and stage. One day I be Bola, who was then in class four, and I was in class five. One day I be Bola, who would start with Yala, because his father was an Ifa priest. And that thing, when it was. My name is Ayodele Olof Tuade. Um, Come again. Ayodele Olof Tuade. Olof Tuade. Tuade, sir. Benisa. I'm from Ekiti. At least my dad is. <laughs> Which part of Ekiti? Ito Faboro, sir. Ito Faboro. Oh. Yes, sir. Yes. I um, that place. Yeah. Um, the, the question I actually... It used to be an NNDP uh, NNDP political uh, Yeah. <laughs> um, my question has to do with history because... Um, history? Yes, sir. Uh, 
because the Yoruba says um, "taba mobita timbo" and "mobita." Really? Yeah. So I am happy to to shape you. I shouldn't be the way in front of a black bus. I forgot that. Okay. <laughs> um. Well, what I I most curious about because I I grew up watching NT, and after a long while. Um, there was um, not be it was it's BCS now, but it was um, TSOS back then. It's so, as TSOS. Yes. So I I, I am a little familiar with your works and all the and um, people that were there in the past and the quality, the quality of the minds of the people that worked in TV, the quality of the television films that came out in those days. And I'm, I'm wondering, looking at things now, where, who dropped the block ball? Well, what happened? What happened between that, the glorious days of the 60s and 70s and when, when there were so many talents on TV, not just in movies, on TV. And your children can watch these movies and you're not afraid that when the newscaster is broadcasting the news will come and start blowing grammar. I wonder what happened. Who dropped the ball? I mean, you you should have the the um, the luxury of hindsight of being able to because you are here now. You were there then. What happened? I am still baffled. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much. The at that time, people who worked in television are very creative. The management of television at that time well, for instance, from the Department of Theatre Arts here, Paul Worika had a problem, which was on television. Paul Worika, from River State, was here as a student and used to come to us. Later, he gave us a play. Uh, But they show and they yeah. also had a program. Forgot the title. Oh, to see this is the, the title of this uh, yeah. okay. company. Yeah. But he had uh, mm -hmm. Odu Thames. In fact, what is she for that of Dalu? That I came once against my soul. Flamingo. Huh? Wins Against My Soul was from Lagos. Mm -hmm. But they had one or two locations around here. We shot, uh, there is a, a shop in, at the wood there. There's a shop there, like a supermarket at that time, which was part of that location. What really went wrong? is that people nowadays don't have the time. And the people who work in television at that time, like I said, they are very creative. But they had no, not even much of a training at that time. Unlike now in NTA, NTA has a TV college. And NTA sent, sent the staff to Jaws. Then the quality of uh, programs which we had, when you were, I mean, the time you were referring to, you know, they will have Ogunde will come to the studio. Drula Dipo. Uh, and all those, those were local programs that people loved. Before TC, I think it's TCOS, TSOS, when uh, Dr. Yemi Farubi brought Alilu. In fact, during that period, I was already in Lagos. But what I'm trying to say is that. Yemi Farubi is not a per se, was in administration. But because he had interest in production, he would take part in uh, the 
discussion group and discussion on television. So he had a small farm of his own, which they are little people, which he brought, and they got uh, sponsorship for them. And the owners kept people on their seats, in their palace, in their rooms, whenever that program comes. So it depends upon the people. Drama in this university before was quite different from what it is today. Because the young men who are here now, or young girls, they, they have so many distractions. They want to be a good uh, actor, a good actress. First, you will be watching plays yourself. It's just like film. If you want to be a good director or producer, you must watch films. There was a deliberate. Uh, up to that area, when Richard Taylor of the BBC, who employed me to television in 1961, every week we have a film preview. We we'll stop. We we'll look at the film and give a critique of it. Where they films, so that that help people like me in having or seeing how others have done this. Either imitate them or surpass them. Are you satisfied? Not really, but thank you very much, sir. Mm -hmm. Well, not really. Oh, let us know why. Well, I. Um... Initially, <laughs> let me remind you that initially we had foreign films on television. But by the introduction of the uh, Open Day, and do uh, and the others. Because they, those people who are matured and they like their own, <coughs> excuse me, they like their own place. Sir? Yeah. Will you ask your question or, or contribute? No, I, I, you, you asked me if I was satisfied and I said no because, um, I, I said no because I, I'm, I'm still, I, I'm, I'm, I'm now left wondering if all those spirits, the Drew Ladipos, the, for example, the Baba Salas, what happened in the train? Did they think that it was going to be WNTV forever? That we're going to just have one TV station in the whole of Nigeria? Isn't there, wasn't there like um, some kind of plan for future generations? Wasn't there like a, a, a sitting down and saying, this, I'm sorry to use this word, pardon my French, shit will soon hit the ceiling, especially with the way um, the military took over at some point. Wasn't there any plans at all for, for future generations? Wasn't there any? Uh, that means, now, when television started in this country, in 1959, the only uh, governance of Chief of Africa, we know. People criticized him for bringing television, particularly the opposition, NCNC. didn't see any value or benefit for the viewers, for the people. They had plans, but at that time, television itself had not really taking root in most African countries or anywhere on the African continent. When the government of Awolo started that, there was competition in the country. Zik started his own. RKTV in Kaduna started. And that's why they say this or your state or the whole Western Union or is the base sector state in the country. They had plans, but they had no money. Whatever they want to, they want to say, there was no money. In fact, WTV had to start commercials, had to have an office in Lagos and transmit to Lagos from Ibadan. 
the transmitter station was at Abafa, near Ikorodu. Near Ikorodu, so that it could reach Lagos, the commercial center of the country. If there was money, the WN, I mean, I about had only two studios there. One big studio and one small studio. They ought to have expanded. But no, no, no management had that vision. Where do we get money from? And when the federal government itself took over the station of other of that state government, you go to NTA headquarters in Lagos. There were only two studios, and it has remained so since 1974. I guess it's 76 or 77 when they took over, I mean, NBC television. So it depends upon the board of management. They just said they are chairman. They, will, they don't know how to lobby government because this is key. Television is important in the life of any government, in the life of any people. Even Abuja, when they said they wanted the bigger studio or a new studio, they sent a, I mean, a, a, a team to Japan. They traveled to Japan and some other countries to see which station they want to follow. By way of building, by way of programming. The man who led them was a politician. He died uh, sometimes last year. I don't know when that is, uh, what money Shagari gave them, but that place has not taken over, has taken over at all till now. So, if government wants television to really improve, if you have a drama, if you, and the BBC, you have what you call uh, Mihasa Studios. They do nothing there other than he has it the place. So that the bigger recording studio will be used for other programs. There's no Rehaza studio here. At least, I don't know. The Rehaza studio is outside. In NTA NTA Ibada. They were I mean, they were very, very in, uh, behind the initiative. Part of their building they now use as a studio C. Studio C. That's outside the boot, they cover it up, so I don't believe uh, I mean, they won't be affected. Planning is of essence in anything. Those of you who are here, the department here, if it doesn't plan for you, those who are drama students, or if my friend didn't uh, plan and he has a production, he will be in trouble. What I was taught is that 70% of planning is essential to any production and to anything at all. The government do not pay any bill for television. They just want to see themselves. Because if they do, I don't know whether the people at the end or at the top, whether they are free. People like us cannot be there and uh, you won't ask salaries. Because if they appoint you, the political party appoints you as DG, you won't like to hurt them, would you? I had resigned in WTV without getting another job because I disagreed over, over a program. They had, I was on air, let it say 66. In 1967, the year of the coup, I now went to the archive and did a program on Kafar Badiwa, Ukotiebo, Akitola, and Sadawana. When they got to Akitola, they faded me out. Because at that time, those people who were actually, they were still at that, and the justice, if programs you make or you produce are excellent. You get sponsorship for it. So, if you 
say that uh, there was no planning. I will, I will agree with you. But they don't have fault. You see where they put us. A man who is, I mean, who founded the television and the radio station said two point something billion is for publicity. Whereas the government is saying it is for arms. Our politicians don't help us. An independent, I mean, television channels for this time go to the bank in Norway. And therefore, the policy of program, the policy of staff will be different from that of entertainment. Even now, shall I already there? I haven't seen much any serious changes in entertainment. See the old programs that they are running. But now then, it has got enough money. Yeah, really good. That's what you can do. Radio station. I understand there are about 80 radio stations in the back now. I'll find out that the problem we have is television or film. Now you hear me this film, it's a different matter. In 19, I don't know, Major uh, General Aruna, Ibrahim. When was commissioner, I mean, they called them commissioner. Commissioner for information, Lagos. Yes, it was Lagos. I sent the paper to them at the uh, National Council of Information. They did anything about it. About film. It was tied to the first time they had to film the paper. But nobody cared about it. But with the information of the uh, National uh, NFC, Indian Film Corporation. The, I don't know what they are doing. They are now. Yes? Mrs. Abi? Miss, huh? Miss. So, I'll take note of that. Alright. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. satisfied. Ah, thank you very much. Good. 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 My name is Ayo Babajiri, and I'm a member of the IOC. Um, of course, I privilege to have a, have a working experience. Is that right? <laughs> and uh, of course, it was exciting. Now, I have two questions. One, um, you starting at the beginning uh, as uh, an operations person, I mean, as a cameraman, as a film editor, and having gone through several formats uh, in terms of um, 16mm, 35mm, pneumatic, um, warning, and all of that. I don't know, I'm asking if you are afraid of Acquainted with what? If I am. If you are acquainted with the um, facility equipment that uh, is being used now, and if you do, um, what would you say you would have loved to have in those days in terms of um, um, ease of uh, operation um, with the kind of equipment that is being used now against what? to have in those days. And secondly, uh, what's your take, sir, on what um, almost all of the media houses uh, have, uh, they call LTP, let them be, where um, there, are, there are no in-house productions anymore. Um, what we have is everything, even news, that uh, supposed to be um, of public interest. You have to pay for everything. Now, I don't know what is your take on this. On LTP? Uh, no, no, no. <laughs> they call it LTP. Yes. Let them pay. Yes. That's so, what I said. LTP. Yes, sir. All right. 
Now check this. Is. You see, if you study the, the, I mean, this country as a nation, unless somebody does something wrong, nobody will think about the new law. Nobody. A few, I think, was it yesterday you came to my house and we were discussing about uh, the vast convocation of this university. Some of the members of staff didn't want some graduates to wear native dress. We are in Ibadan, in Yoruba town. Culturally, you cannot say you shouldn't wear the vast solo to graduation. Until there is a law, if you continue like that. Now, I know the history of MT. It was an MTA affair. Some editors will sit down in the newsroom, get money, cover stories, and don't pay that money through the commercial department. They pay it into their pocket. It leaked. Somebody was caught. And therefore, they say, so we can send the news. Selling the news is not right. Selling the news is not right because it is supposed to be what people should. I mean, if you come to me, like what you are doing now, and you need to hear it from MTA, it's come to cover this for MTA news. Look at If it's not because of, I mean, if I went to them that I, uh, this thing is happening, they would say, pay. Oh, yes, let them pay. That's how I take it. And it was from the from headquarters. And during the period, the man who they caught was almost gone. But because he was hard working, and because his boss didn't want any more hard work, that's how they come about LTP. People who are taking money, saying that you have to pay for this, and keeping the money in their pocket. And then, commercial department will come the next day. Ah, what we saw, how can a card bring? bring this as, as a news item. It's a commercial, even if it is in the news. That's how everything begins. It is not right. But because people are cheating, that was why they introduced LTP. And you can't blame management for that. Your first question was about equipment. Have you? Hmm. Technology develops every day. When we started in WMTV, bulky cameras were used. Bulky cameras, even in the studio that people have to carry cables, which was as big as this. Later, for instance, in the editing section, they introduced Umatic, which is one inch, I mean about two inch uh, cable. Later, one inch. Those were easy. Film itself at that time, I had, an, I had the disagreement with the late chief uh, ambassador, Ulishola, at a workshop in which I presented the paper at the University of Lagos. He said, film is dead. And at the time he said that, film was still there because Eastman Kono was still selling a lot. But because he had read about tapes, which Sonny eventually brought to the country, Sonny of uh, Japan brought it to the country. But it is not as pliable as celluloid. So there was nothing anybody could do. If you want to succeed in this business, then you must follow technology. Now, what they now have is a small something like this. But my background is film, celluloid, and that creates problems. When I was man when I managed uh, the production services of NTA, ten years, we got an Italian to come and teach our editors how to edit one inch. 
but that can be 21. I think that part can be still there on the Twitter. And they now send people from other stations, other stations to come and learn. I wasn't interested. Because first, I knew I would be an editor for life. I'd moved over to production as a director or producer. So, you ask whether I, whether I took my decision. I wasn't interested in the video. But now, there's nothing I can do because it takes time for you to process a film. And there's no processor here. The NFC, JAWS, they had a laboratory. They didn't do anything with it. So, if any production, and for any production, you just have to use what technology provides. Now, those people who started processing film stock and all this, this man color, they are still in business because some of the Big cinemas you see, a big, I mean, films which you see, they still shoot on celluloid in Hollywood. But they again have this device to invade. You use tape, you send it to the lab, and they produce for you what they will show you in the cinema. They haven't changed the projectors in the cinemas. So, for any television station in this country, that station must follow what technology is providing. Thank you, sir. Prof. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, I thank you for coming, sir. Thank you, sir. And I'm connected with him through Professor Adenina, only Adenina of yes. Department of Linguistics. Is he here yet? He, he's not here yet. I'm Professor Akogu Mishola. Uh, so, Baba wa Adebo Yiga, Rudoku Pifi. What did Baba do? I'm going to kill you now. Opa Fila Fila, Loju Ija. Now, uh, I knew something dramatic happened in 1979. 79. That is when we had the uh, proliferation of stations. When Jack and Dick came up with LTV, and uh, from, I mean, 24 hours, I think, that through some sort of uh, challenges. NTA, because you know you normally close either by 10 or 11. Yes. Uh, that's uh, one. And I knew before the NTA stations who always have exchange programs. Yes. Maybe you see Abba present something, Ibadan present something. And like you said earlier on, we had this uh, WNB, CA, WNTV. And then stations were autonomous. And they could come up with any programs of their relating to the immediate environment. And people were so attached. But when we started having exchange programs, there was this kind of uh, well, not too much attachment again. I knew then, if Ilea or Christmas was coming, you commission a particular artist, whether Lyric Paima, that is Southwest, or to come up with a particular play, and they 
God. And there was this great uh, competition and rivalry. And you were scanning for talents. And trying to bring up new artists. But now, it is a new order. We now have African magic relying on a, just any video tape or CD. What can you say about this? That one. Number two, I had to go to Germany. I went to NTA here in Ibadan. Yes. The producer of Apple, I mean the producer of Apple, so that is the added on tape. Yes. But when I got there, I was told that they, they had to. Use that tape to record another, so another play or anything. That is wiping off Oba Uso. Yes. I got to Iwalewa in Bayreuth in Germany. Yes. I was able to see the thing. Yes. As a professional. Uh, somebody who is still uh, blessed and still having interest in this creativity. I wonder whether you've advised all these people who are current uh, practitioners what to do with the archiver uh, recordings, especially those which are very, very crucial to our creation or culture. That's uh, the other one. The last one, sir. Ah. You said, Professor, uh, the last one. We talk about the evolution. I'm taking off from her. Yes. She was interested in history. The theater taking off from the groove. From the groove. Then to the village square or market. Yes. Then from the school stage or church stage, then we move there from there to the uh, pay in chapter, that is something like this, the box, then from there, they now move to the photo, photo play, because they knew they had to move. I'm talking of Bukundi tradition. Traveling theater. The, yes. <coughs> Traveling theaters. They had to move from one place to another. Now, thereafter, the cellular came in before the issue of uh, reversal fee which you mentioned that is shooting with video transferring it to the read and you know we have the issue of read to read even television houses i think that is the reason why they are having problem and back to CT and other things we cannot talk of what do you think we should do to retrieve the past it's beyond, I'm even talking about the documentary. So, because 
we cannot. I was able to lay my hand on something posted to me from Concord when the Queen of England, I mean, yes, came to University of Ibadan. I think perhaps as a consultant, if you are not one, make yourself one. So as to help us achieve certain things that will assist the young ones. And some people, they don't have sense of records. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> Prof, when we talk about history of this country, we should all be ashamed. Because nobody keeps records since the British left. They keep some records, but they are not well kept. Let me give you a very sad story about WNTV. In 1970, I joined Calvin in Nigeria films by Francis Oladini from WNTV. I think in 1972, we wrote uh, WNTV from Calvin that we would have to have an arrangement with them to cover new stories for them because they don't have enough camera. So we started giving them stories. One day, I went to WNTV and I said, I saw a heap of films outside. Rain had fallen into it and they destroyed it. And uh, I wept that day. When my father died, I didn't weep. When my mother died, I didn't weep. Anybody dies, I don't weep. But I went bitterly for that. And I went upstairs to see the general manager late to tell you in there. I said, you should come and see something. He said, what is it? He said, just come. He saw it. When I picked from those firms outside, drenched by the rain, were the installation of our bandit Swati Adelemi as governor of Western Egypt, Sir Kashim Ibrahim, and Sir Francis Akadu Ibiam, they've all been destroyed. Those covered by the WNTV. I know Federal Film Unit would likely have that. But Federal Film Unit itself has been dissolved. But the Nigerian Film Corporation, I think, inherited some of their films. They've created, because I was on their first board of the Nigerian Film Corporation, I represented NTA, the first board of the Nigerian Film Corporation. So, they have a good archive there now because I think the God is an archivist who is managing the place for them. But that is if there is NEPA or HPACA that would give them the type of temperature that those films uh, need. Now, that is part of our history that has been destroyed here in Nevada. The day late. Father Orlando Matis arrived at Papa and knelt down to kiss the Nigerian ground. It was one of the films there. And he, look, so you put some people in places, but they don't understand what they are doing. And that's a telling thing. How can a man like Dr. Ofonagoro, Professor, I think it's Professor, Professor Ofonagoro, he became Minister of Information and said, announced, all files should be kept by each ministry or each something. And if that is what they did then, and the law is, keep your files to 10 years. After 10 years, you deposit it at the National Archive. There's National Archive in Nevada, in Nedugu and in Kaduna. But this is an historian saying that ministries should just keep their files. You don't need it in the archive. Can you imagine? And he is an historian. So, I, I mean, 
that is part of the problem we have in this country. People in high places don't know what to do. And when you, for instance, you want me to be a consultant, if I write to the new minister of information what you should do, no, no, they, they will just take my paper, give it to Mr. X to come in another way. For instance, when we were in post production of the Africans by Lima Sri, the day we had the approval to transmit in London, I felt so I felt so tired that when my other colleagues, the executive producer and the other producer, were drinking wine, red wine, with Alima's room, I just sneaked into one room in the beginning, and the West Coast, sneaked into one room and saw a program. And I sat down, I wanted to go and take a short nap. And I saw. Uh, Uh, crime, what they call it, Crime Watch. I saw a program called Crime Watch. It's transmitted every fortnight because of the work that is involved. When I became general manager at Channel 10 and 5, I introduced it as Crime Beat because of the facilities we have. Got in touch with the police and they were happy about it. I left NTA, I was posted from NTA Channel 10 and 5 to Seven. The man who succeeded me cancelled the program. No, I'm coming. I got to channel seven. So your know, revise is what you can do best on channel seven. You can enter in Kenya. I introduced the same program, Bolo Pasore, in Yoruba. Immediately I became commissioner and I came to Ibadan. The, the person who took over from me cancelled the now, when I became a commissioner here, there were a lot of robbery in Nibada and New York State. In Nibada in particular, whoever was there at Diabwe, uh, uh, the, the police, the Asia Commission of Police, was selling arms. We had that. And there was nothing you could do than to introduce such a program. So I sent to Lagos, I brought the Yoruba version, I brought the English version. The first thing, at cabinet level, the commissioner of police on that panel, I mean in the cabinet, said, we don't need that, we can handle our work. And the governor cannot tell the commissioner of police, because they have the same plan or whatever. Huh? So that killed the transmission, I, and I offered it for this US. But what they did not know, when the Commissioner of Police said that, oh, I was sad. Because the program was to help them. Because when the program got to Channel 7 in Nikeja, they stole a car in Lagos and it was sold to Bendel House Corporation. And somebody gave the, uh, the information. Because we had one permanent uh, policeman in Mufti uh, on our station so that we, we asked people to bring information to us and that they would, I mean, whatever they tell us is confidential. That's how we got that car in Bendel. When a commissioner of police says we don't need such programs, what is, I mean, that's part of the problem you have in this country. Now, your second question, and that's about history. We cannot, it is when you get to your own position that you can effect change. The people in the ministries, I saw what Mr. Olaba, Suji Olaba, retired. He writes a lot of articles in the newspapers, Guardian in particular. I am sure he must have been retired because of his writing. He will tell you what the mean civil service should do and all this, and talks about, and he will write about Nigeria itself. 
So, we have a problem in this country. People don't appreciate history. And what they, they, they don't know is that every minute of a human life is history. The moment you live today, I am making history here today. All of you sitting down here, you are making history. If I don't film circle, will agree with me that you are all making history. But if members of the IFC continue this, the history of arts will go there. Because they are recording and they can put it, as they told me, they will send the copy to the, now, to the library, to the Institute of African Studies, and to the Atara, and the Media Center. So, generations yet of birth will be able to see it in the future. Your second question, oh, that, that was the last one, eh, as a matter of fact. Your second question. Well, I said something about the rural because we know this in the Ah, you said you saw uh, Obakusu in Bairo. In Bairo. Who lived there? Who used to be here? Brought up through that depopulation. Lankeo brought them up. So, when they recorded it here, even in television, as stage play and as television play, the man took, I mean, showed that as his work, as part of his work when he got to Yambi. Adoni Yaolo Risha, the good Sisawenja, you know, was his wife there. She also wrote books on Oshun. I don't know whether there's anybody from the Institute of American Studies who came, or even from theater, as in, as a PhD paper or, or a first degree paper or something. So, but it again is the same problem I told earlier. If a WMTV engineer is now late, Dumping all that because he wanted to create more rooms within that building. So we don't have a sense of history. Come again. Exchange. Exchange program. Yes, MTA started that in order to integrate all different cultures into the national network. And you can do that. Very well. The exchange programs you said, they were told, they were commissioned each station. They would give them a team and they would produce to that team. That's what they did then. But they don't have money to produce. And that's part of the problem. We've always cheated artists in this country. Television stations cheated artists a lot. Because when I was in Finland, 1975, for a production, uh, one of, I'm happy that some lecturers are here, one of the problems which you lecturers create for us in television is that you do your research, you don't let people know about your research. Can you imagine that Hubert Ogunde, man of the theater which MT and PC made, the information that uh, Ebu Clark, Professor Ebu, Mrs. Ebu Clark, had written a book on Ogunde, which was not available in this country. It was when we wanted to do that. I went to, in 1979, I went to, uh, I went on equipment, I mean, to buy equipment for NTA, and discovered that, and I met Mr. Richard Taylor, who said, is that man still there? Which man? Is that, that man who, who travels with his theater? When, he, when I was in Port Harcourt, he was always there speaking uh, pigeons. But yes, the old man is still there. Is that, can we make a film of him? Yes. You think NTA will agree? I will handle that. And that's how we came. But everything about Ogunde has been documented in a book. By Ebu Clark. And that book was not available yet. He knew the, 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 the publisher, got it all with them, paid the rights, and uh, 
We use that as a research until they are proposed. Went to the National Archive, looking at all newspapers. That I bought a book to mark our research at the National Library. 